With Thanksgiving and the holiday season upon us, we have an opportunity to stop and reflect upon the things that we can and should be thankful for, even despite the ongoing unnecessary loss of life internationally. From Syrian and Yazidi children to those of various ethnic backgrounds that perished in Kenya, Mali, Lebanon, and France. We should be thankful for our free and robust society, despite the divisiveness in our politics that remains an obstacle to cooperation in maximizing our talents. We should be thankful for our nation and our allies, despite the fact that we are under attack. And yes, we are under attack. From rhetorical challenges and published threats to lone wolf attacks and coordinated ambushes. Even those we disagree with in other regards, the Chinese with cyber attacks, the Russians with the takeover of the Crimea, and even the Iranians with nuclear capabilities. We engage them in various ways, from robust debate to non-military tactics, all with hopes for resolution through negotiation. However, with ISIS, we are no longer dealing with combatants that seek to negotiate. We are not dealing with an enemy that seeks a resolution other than one involving our total destruction, toppling everything that we are thankful for. Maybe this isn't a war to everyone, but it is something, a volatile struggle for the establishment of a new world order and a modern understanding of global peace and contemporary living. It is a struggle of defeating violent extremism, coalescing various cultures, combining competing forces for a common goal, and cultivating a new peace where realities are brokered with conversation, not chaos. This is a struggle involving ancient times, military history, recent events, and everyday lives. Yet, with all of those dynamics in place, it's still increasingly coming down to being a battle between good and evil, defenders of freedom versus violent oppressors that promote twisted interpretations of faith through propaganda and broken promises. The issues surrounding this crisis are many. Syrian refugees in cities such as Pittsburgh, American troops on the ground in Syria and Iraq to defeat ISIS, cooperation with nations including Iran and Russia. We will deal with those in due course with, hopefully, appropriate study, care within the process, and acute focus on the primary job of our federal government protection of United States citizens, from our constitutional rights to our national sovereignty and safety. With that in mind, we must remember that the paramount goal of any initiative that addresses the very real threat from the JV team turned caliphate called ISIS is a simple one, to defeat completely the enemy that seeks to terrorize Americans, stabilize the globe, and destabilize it with extremism and destroy a free and robust way of life with persistent violence against the innocent. There is no gray area. There are no comparisons between yesteryear's wars and today's morphed rules of violent jihad. There's no room for partisan stances and political posturing. There's just too much on the line. And at a time when we can be thankful that we have a nation where we can challenge ourselves to be great, be historic, and be victorious as one big team over the cause and actions of evildoers. We should also be thankful that we have a history to lean on that shows us that we have previously, we can today, and we must always be vigilant to protect our freedoms and safety in the homeland so that freedom can ring around the world for generations to come.